so welcome back to my channel ladies I am so thrilled that you are back here to watch my fabric pumpkin tutorial as you can see I have been quite the busy little creator here at home and these pumpkins were inspired by several that I have seen throughout Joann's Hobby Lobby Tuesday morning and I just had to have some of these pumpkins in my home and I have used some recycled material and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial I think you guys are going to absolutely love it I know you guys have been wanting something shabby chic so as you can see that pumpkin has a beautiful flower and the tutorial is going to come up for that so just stay tuned anyway I just really want to thank you guys for coming to my channel for checking it out for leaving me beautiful comments and encouraging me to keep doing what I love to do most which is sharing and creating beautiful projects so that you guys can go home and try them out as well it's an enabling effect it's a domino effect I create you guys create and hopefully your hobbies do not dislike me but we're gonna try to create some beautiful projects on a budget and I am hoping that in the next couple days I can shoot some of these videos that I have recorded and that we don't have any issues with our mic or our sound I know in the last couple days we've been having some massive issues and I'm hoping that perhaps tomorrow um, my daughter's boyfriend can look into the computer and see what's going on but in the meantime I really truly appreciate every single comment you guys leave me it means a lot to me and just to give you um, some FYI as to why it's so important when you guys leave comments not only does it encourage us to want to create more but it also helps our status on YouTube so whenever there's comments YouTube sees that there's some comments there's an engagement going on in my channel and so they're gonna bump up my channel and that way other people who don't know about me or don't know that I've come back to YouTube they can easily find my video tutorial so I really would appreciate if you guys leave me at least a hi May or thanks for sharing or TFS something any little thing will really help boost my ratings with YouTube and that way I can somehow or another grow my channel and be able to give you guys more of what you guys were used to having before now we are trying to work I've heard some of your messages you guys want to see some of my old tutorials and I'm working diligently to see if we can recuperate some of those videos my daughter's trying to learn um, the editing program by Adobe and hopefully she can get that knocked out of the woods so that we can while she's editing one I can edit another one and we can keep going forward that way but your comments sincerely mean a lot to me not only is does it encourage me but it also helps with my channels boosting and the ratings it really truly does help so please if you can and you don't mind leave me a comment below if there's something in particular you guys want me to create comment below tell me what it is that you guys want me to create and I would be more than happy if it's something that I can do and it's doable I'll be more than happy to try to create whatever it is that you guys want I have so far I have a little list and I'm trying to go through the list of all the suggestions and if it's something that's a little bit more complex or requires a lot more money then I will push those to the back of the list I'm not saying that I'm not going to create it I'm just saying that if it's something that requires me to go out and buy things that I don't have already then I'm going to push those to the back of the list if it's something that I can easily recreate then yeah absolutely you guys know me I love altering I love decorating and so those are the projects the videos that you guys are going to see I know you guys want more shabby chic projects I'm working on these I have a few more home decor videos I have a Halloween reef I have a fall reef I have um, I have what well, gosh I have lots of things that I want to share with you guys and all these I have listed so that I can 
create them and bring them onto my channel. So just stay tuned, click on that little bell below, leave comments, and that way if you cl click on the bell, it's going to notify you whenever I go live and you guys can come here and check out what I have going on. And I can, that way, continue moving forward with the videos and whatever it is that we're going to be creating. It just makes life a lot easier um, when we try to keep things scheduled. And I know that my schedule is a little crazy with school and I'm trying to pump out some of these videos and have them pre-recorded. So if you're watching this video, this one was already been recorded several days ago, but it's still good as new because even though you guys saw the pictures on Facebook, you have not yet seen the video. So what are we creating today? We are creating some fabric pumpkins and this is a hat that belongs to my daughter or it did belong to my daughter and I thought this would make a fabulous pumpkin because I don't have to crochet it. I definitely do not do not have to knit it. All I have to do is stuff the bad boy, do a running stitch and I have a pumpkin and you'll see here in a little bit how we do that. This is a recycled fabric that I picked up from the Austin Creative Resale Shop and basically I love that shop because I can fill a bucket of misused, no longer loved fabric, throw it in there, bring it home for five bucks a bucket and I can create wonderful projects. So this is from that and I love the way it turned out but you're going to see a beautiful fabric flower that I create with this fabric material and it's almost like a silk. This is another uh, remnant piece that I picked up and I loved how it turned out as well. It's a little thicker and it was a little harder on my hand but I still love the end results. You're going to need some polyfill. Now I strongly recommend if you have a Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, use your 40% or your 50% coupon to get a discount. I grabbed my polyfill from Walmart. It was less than $15 for like a 50 ounce bag. And I was planning on doing a lot of fabric projects. Now you're also going to need some wine corks. If you don't have wine corks, where can you find these? Well, you can go on eBay and find some there. Unless your neighbor is, uh, you know, he loves wine and maybe he would like to share some of these wine corks with you. You can go there that route. Or you can use some felt and use it for your stem. Or you can just go outside if you have a tree and grab a branch from your tree and use it as one of your stems for your pumpkins. The possibilities are endless. As you can see here, I have used a piece of twine from Dollar Tree to wrap my cork. You would never have known that there's cork underneath. So these little corks are perfect for these projects. On this project here, I have used a piece of crochet trim or a doily, sorry, and I haven't yet attached uh, the stem, but I will shortly. Each pumpkin has a various uh, different sizes, so make sure you decide what size you want your pumpkin to be. Keep in mind that the taller the pumpkin, the harder it is to pull your needle through that hole. So don't make them more uh, taller than six inches because it's so hard. It really, really is. So this one here is about eight inches and it was about seven inches um, and I use about a quarter inch seam to do a running stitch and you're going to sew on one side. So they're all different sizes again. See even that little pumpkin there that was like four or five inches, even that one hurt my hand. So just make sure that if you're doing it by yourself, unless you have someone that can push down on the pumpkin while you pull the needle through, if it's you're by yourself just don't make it bigger than five inches because trust me it's going to hurt your hands. You need a needle and I use a upholstery thread and it's very strong so you want some strong thread. You don't want some cheap cheap thread and I'm sorry I like Dollar Tree but do not use your Dollar Tree f thread for this because you're just going to be frustrated every time it breaks. This is a piece of, I think
think I got this at Dollar Tree. It was like a twine or something. I'm not sure. And then there's yarn you can use. This is a burlap twine from Dollar Tree. Comes a pack of three. I don't recommend this one either. It's perfect for the cork or the stem, but not for um, threading your pumpkin. It breaks too easily. The other one is um, a hemp twine that I get from Hobby Lobby. That one was pretty good, but I normally use that one for my books. You'll also need some seam binding if you have any. If you don't, that's okay. You can use whatever you have. I'm going to be using some seam binding. You'll need a flat nose plier, and that's because the needle's going to get so tight, you're going to need some help pulling that needle through. Okay, so select your fabric. That is the most important. Select your fabric. And don't worry about whether or not it's wrinkled because remember, if you're like me, you're crazy, a little bit of crazy, and it's, I don't know, 100 scoops of cuckoo -cu -cu and that shabbiness of that fabric just makes gives it character. So I'm not saying that you're going to have them all like that, but <laughs> I'm saying that if the fabric is naturally that easily distressed, don't sweat the small stuff, okay? Go for it. That's all I have to say. Okay, so you're going to sew on one side, and you're going to fold it over and sew on one side and you'll have an opening on top. Leave the top and the bottom open. Do not sew that. You just want to do it on the side. And as you can see, every, like I'm saying there, every pumpkin has a different size. Just go by taste, go by what you feel you can do. Grab your needle, thread it with your thick uh, upholstery thread, and you're going to thread your needle and run it through. So now that your needle has been threaded, now you're going to do a running stitch. And again, I'm going in about 3 8 of an inch from the top. And I'm going to do a lock stitch. And just keep in mind that you're going to be pulling this, so you got to make sure you lock that in place really tight. So make a couple knots if you need to. Run your uh, stitch all the way across or all the way around and pull and gather your little stitch there so you can see I'm doing a running stitch and I was going to do a whip stitch that I learned and I love so much with shoddy but the only problem is that it was a lot harder and you want to tuck that in so you don't have any um, bunching so it didn't work for this so a running stitch is ideal if you want to run it through your sewing machine you got to make sure that you use longer um, looser threads and pull at the end I think it's, um, it's I think it's harder when you do it in the um, sewing machine I'd rather do it by hand to be honest so go ahead and do your running stitch and then and then um, once you have that complete uh, you will it together and then you'll apply or put some polyfill inside.
So I just kind of gathered it together and I'm running a stitch across to lock it in place so that when um, I start putting in the polyfill, nothing's falling through the little hole. So as you can see, I'm just running it back and forth um, in that gathered stitch to lock it in place. And it is a little stiff, so you might want to thimble or pull with the wire, um, flat nose wire, whichever, whichever works for you. Or have your hubby come and help you. So one side is sewn and once the one side has been sewn and you've pulled your threads really tightly, go ahead and snip that thread and I'm just making a little knot there so when I stitch again I don't have to do this, in this process all over again. So that's all I'm doing there. And now you can start stuffing your pumpkin. And if you're going to do your stitch um, after you stuff, just don't stuff it too much. And stuff as much as you can just to give it some type of a shape. And then as you do your running stitch and you lock it in place, you can take and in the little hole start feeding in some of the polyfill to stuff up more of it. And you'll see how I do that. Here you can see I'm doing my running stitch on the top and I have filled the fabric with some polyfill and again I'm just doing that so that it can stay its shape, keep its shape and I find it to be a lot easier if you don't overstuff it immediately. You want it to be firm but you don't want to overstuff it in this process. So run your stitch and then we'll be ready for the next step.
Okay, lock and pull, and you see I'm pulling and gathering carefully without tearing up my thread, and I'm also stuffing in in that little hole, trying to make it a little bit more firm. So this is this is how I like doing it because it makes life a lot easier than stuffing it and try to close close it with all that polyfill sticking out. So just a lot easier way of doing this. Pull it tightly. And when you can, stuff some more of that polyfill. Keep stuffing until it is so firm. You want it to be really firm. You don't want a um, pumpkin that's half empty. So you want to make sure it's fully firm. As we did in the bottom, you're going to run your needle through back and forth until you lock those stitches in place. And once you have that done, you're going to grab some twine and start wrapping it to give it the pumpkin look. Through the bottom opening, Pull your needle with the twine through. Again, on the other side, you might want to use your round or flat nose plier to pull the needle out. And yes, just for the record, yes, I had my PJs on because I was filming this. I think it was about 1 in the morning and I couldn't sleep so I came in and did this video. Um, so it was pretty late when I was filming this video so that's why I had my PJs on. But again, every, like I'm showing, every fabric is a different size go by the size that you want just the height I say strongly strongly recommend don't do it past six it's going to be so hard to pull that needle through and there's that beanie we're going to cut the little visor off and this one's easy because I don't have to sew or pull or you know tuck like I did in the other one 
So if you have any old beanies, old shirts, flannel shirts would be fabulous. You know, you can raid your husband's closet if he has any fat flannel shirts, old pair of jeans, anything that you can recycle, old dish towels, whatever you can use. Use it to create your pumpkins, your holiday pumpkins, and just give it new meaning, new life. I wished I had flannel shirts, and in fact, I was going to tell my father-in-law to bring some tomorrow when he came, and I might just have Eric maybe send him a tax before he gets on that flight, but if you have flannel shirts, that is going to be super gorgeous. If so, um, I'm not telling you to go out there and buy flannels, guys, listen carefully. I want you to grab what you have in your home grab old jeans, an old ugly sweater, you can use the sleeves from a sweater, you can use the body parts, the, the inside parts of your ugly sweaters that you get from grandma, <laughs> no offense guys, but if you have one of those ugly sweaters, I'm sure you can use it and transform it into something beautiful, so think about that while you're having your coffee, what sweater can you butcher, what pair of jeans can you recycle, what pair of socks. I've done snowman socks with my kids. Just think about those things that you might have already in your home. So do a running stitch like we did with the other one and do that all the way around. Stuff your pumpkin and once your pumpkin's stuffed then you can do your top stitch and if there's anything that needs firming just squeeze it through the little hole.
right there you see me pulling a needle through see how hard it is with the flat nose plier and it does it gets really really hard so you're going to go from the bottom up and then go back down and adjust your little threads or your twine um, to give it the look that you want Shape it into place. It's really important that you shape it. And once you're comfortable, set it aside and grab your cork because we're going to be wrapping the twine or embroidery floss as well around it. So there's my cork. Grab a piece of twine. Now the easiest way is to make a knot on one end that's big enough and glue that down and just keep wrapping it around and every so often you want to put a bead of hot glue just to lock it in place so just do this and as you can see on my left hand side there's a, lot, a little pile of scraps I hope you guys recall what this pile of scrap is because that is some scraps that I use for a flower and you guys should should be seeing that video before you see this one. It was like an enticer type of video. So keep winding and, and wrapping the twine around the cork until you are fully um, okay with how it looks.
and just keep doing your wrapping until you have all your pieces and then go ahead and glue the one bottom in and attach it to your center hole of your pumpkin. If you want to have any uh, shabby chic laces or anything like that, do it before you do your cork so that it's not getting in the way. Now your cork has been glued and attached to your pumpkin. The next step we're going to do is create a bow. You guys know I love making my crazy bows. So for this we're going to use the bow maker, some seam binding, some yarn, some twine, and miscellaneous scraps. And we're going to create a beautiful bow for our pumpkin. And for this you're going to sandwich it in between the two pieces that look like headbands. Put it in between wrap it around one of the dowels and back to the middle section of the two headbands as I call them and wrap it around back so this is a very easy way of creating a bow and I love 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 this bow maker When I'm making my bows, I fold them in half and have the little bunny ears folded in half and then I put a glob of glue and attach it to the stem. You don't want too much glue. When I say a glob, I mean, you know, you're going to put some glue and attach it to the stem. So go ahead and do that. And by the way, I do have one bow maker available. So if anyone's interested, I do have a bow maker available for sale. Let me know if you're interested. It is $20 plus shipping. Attach your bow and whatever else you want to decorate your pumpkin. If you have any metal embellishments or any pearls, go ahead and apply a little one on you know, or in the middle of the bow. and. You can see I'm doing that with one little pearl that Young Sue gifted me. And 
Isn't that stinking cute? I think it's so adorable. I love how it turned out. And I think, I think I'm going to be raiding my daughter's closet to see what she's got in there. Because I don't own any sweaters because it's hot in Texas. But if you have sweaters, oh my God, the sleeves would be perfect. Anyway, so I'm going to be creating a fabric flower. And you guys are going to have to come back to check that tutorial because that fabric flower is going to go on the top of this pumpkin. So go ahead, leave in the comments below. Uh, what do you think about this fabric pumpkins and upcycling your old ugly sweaters to create some beautiful pumpkins that everyone's going to absolutely love in your home so if you're up to it if you have an ugly sweater share your comment in the comment section below let me know who gave it to you and what you plan to do with it so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope this inspired you to create something beautiful. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell so that you're notified whenever I am uh, live or uploaded a video. And also comment. That is so, so important. Please comment below. That helps my channel grow. I hope, again, that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, you all know how to find me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.